Why not you? Really, this video is dedicated to the software engineer thinking that entrepreneurship is not for them or that that level of success is not for them or they're not built for it. Reason I'm making this video is because I have received an absurd amount of emails alongside comments that scream self-doubt and scream limiting beliefs and imposter syndrome and all these things. And they say, it is not for me. I'm not built for this. So maybe my next lifetime. So my question to you is why not you genuinely? And I don't want you clicking off this video saying, oh, what is this? Another guru talking about BS. No, really. Pause for a second and ask yourself, why not you? Why shouldn't it be you? You're going to say, oh, well, the chances of this type of success are so low. It's, you know, this and that 0.1% or 1%. Okay. But why shouldn't it be you? What, what's stopping you? Are you lacking something that somebody else has? Most of you watching this have a computer, have hands, have eyes to see. So you're doing better than you might think. So this video is going to be dedicated to how you can get yourself out of that mental rut as a software engineer. And part of the way that I'm going to explain this is not only through myself, use myself as an example, but also a lot of the founders inside code to ceo my startup accelerator. And I'm going to talk about their journey more on the mental side of things, how they're able to kind of switch from that, oh, this is not for me or I can't do it to it should be me and I can do it. I know this is a little different than what you're used to. This is more of like a mindset video, but I think this is extremely important for us to understand, especially as software engineers, because we are such logical individuals we tend to really forget about the emotional side of things and we try to drown it out and push it away without realizing that it kind of dictates our entire subconscious life. And until you start realizing that your subconscious dictates your conscious, well, you're not going to be too happy of a camper. So let's first talk about my scenario and then I'm going to get into a couple of the founders to explain how there is no such thing as probabilities with regards to, oh, this has 1% of success or this has 0.1% of success or I'm not built for it. If I were to look at myself, so if I went back in time and I took a look at myself and I, I would ask myself, do you ever see yourself being in this position? I would say no, I simply do not because I was never the best coder. I was better than average, don't get me wrong, but I was never the top 10x developer. I was never the guy who got the highest grade in my classes. There was always somebody getting higher grades than me. Don't get me wrong, we're better than average, but once again, it doesn't matter if you're second or third place because everybody takes a look at who the first place is. And in many situations in my life, I was never really first place in anything. Maybe in grand scheme of things, if you tally everything together, then you could argue, but on a, just an isolation level, I wasn't necessarily the best at one specific thing. People always called me jack of all trades, master of none. But that also came from the fact that if I would try to do something and I realized given enough time I wasn't able to become the best at it, I would then switch on to something else. Now, back in the day, part of that was simply because I was too impatient to give it enough time to actually get good at something. But the point I'm trying to make here is if you take a look at my quote unquote resume from the perspective of just raw quantitative numbers and you had to assign a per probability percentage of how successful you think this guy's gonna be, or rather, this guy's gonna be this successful and by that I mean you can classify that net worth or whatever. I'm just going to use money as a prime example because that's what most of us are familiar with and it, it essentially ends up making the analogy much easier to understand. So if we're breaking down in terms of money and people had to guess, sort of like we have poly market making guesses, right? If people had to guess on if I myself would go at that point in my life with those kind of metrics, right, quantitative resume, if I'll be in a position that I am today, most people would 100% bet on the no because that is what at the time it would look like. But day by day, day by day, by simply obsessing over it and trying and trying, my results got better and better. So it would shift from a no to a yes, slowly but surely over time. But it was never really in favor of a yes up until it got to the point where people just said, okay, you got lucky. So I'm gonna break that down. When I first started off, I wasn't good at necessarily anything, right? I was better than average, but I wasn't the best. And I always thought that it would be extremely difficult for me to land a six figure job because back in the day, before COVID and all that stuff happened, six figures was a lot of money in the United States, at least even beginning six figures, like 100,000, 120,000 was a decent amount of money, especially for somebody in their early 20s. So I thought if I can make that much money, it would pr I would prove to myself that I can do it, quote unquote. 
Keep in mind, I was even trying to compete with the quants making $250,000, $300,000 straight out of university. At that time, my limiting belief was if I can make 120 grand while in university or coming out of university, I would consider that an extremely big success. And I remember working my ass off to try and hit that number. And after internship, after internship, after working at NASA, after doing research opportunity at UCLA, after staying after school for robotics, I landed a six-figure position junior year of the university. And I remember I used to take, I don't know, over 21 units of classes because I had a five-year degree that I wanted to finish in four years. For reference, I was electrical and computer engineering. And I was juggling schoolwork and classes all at the same time, but I loved it. I loved working because I felt extremely productive and I felt proud of myself because I accomplished what I sought out to accomplish. And it was only then that I took a look inwards and I realized, wait a minute, this sort of impossible goal that I set a standard for and I set a goal for, I managed to achieve it. From the outside, it looked crazy to other people because like, wow, this guy's, you know, in his early 20s, 20, 20 years old, he's making six figures, how is he doing it? But then, it's sort of the analogy of, you know, if you start, it's called hubris. Uh, when you start, it's pride, really. When you start being too proud of yourself, you are in the wrong room. And that's exactly where I was. In the room I was in, in the people I was surrounded by, I was sort of, quote unquote, the best. Until I started stepping into new rooms and I started realizing there are people that are completely eclipsing me, right? So I'm nothing compared to them. I, I realized I was a very, very small fish in a very, very big pond. People looked at me and thought, wow, this guy's in his early 20s pulling in six figures. I looked at other people in their early 20s pulling in seven, eight figures or pulling in six figures a day or a week. And I realized, okay, there are levels to this. And then the same exact thought popped into my head. Okay, but I can't get to that level. And I would always stop myself. Wait, why can't you? You were the guy who couldn't get to six figures a year by the age of, let's say, 21, but you still did it. So what's stopping you? to getting to, let's say, seven figures a year by the age of 22 or 23 or whatever. And I would always stop myself and be like, no, I'm a software engineer. I have to be logical. You know, it requires time and effort and learning and all these things and iterations and feedback. And I would always talk myself out of it. I would convince myself, oh, yeah, I'm so smart that I'm going to talk myself out of it. And I realized this is something that most software engineers end up facing. I don't know if it's an IQ thing or whatever, but I genuinely believe there's like an IQ range, or at least there's a smartness range, quote unquote, or if you fall within that smartness range, it's honestly, it's going to do you more harm than good because you're going to talk yourself out of ever taking risks or you're going to talk yourself out of ever dreaming too big, right? You won't allow yourself to be, quote unquote, delusional, which in many cases, you do need to be somewhat delusional. Like I said, you do need to think that you're sort of like the main character of your own world. Obviously, that's not the case. If you pass away, nobody's going to give two shits, excuse my French, maybe outside of your immediate family, but time's going to pass, the world's going to forget about you, the world's not going to stop spinning, right? You are important for maybe very few people and of course for your own self, but to other individuals, nobody really cares down the line. But for your own life, you have to think you are somewhat important. You have to think you need to have a sense of self, a sense of ego for you to be able to go out and accomplish things in the world or the world's simply going to swallow you whole. So every single person that I talk with and I try to mentor, I saw the same thing in them as I saw in myself when I was younger. It was that sort of doubt, that limiting belief that I'm not built for it. And every single person had a different reason for it. Some people had a traumatic childhood. Some people had an unfortunate set of circumstances happen to them in their later on in, in life. Some people simply just had such a bad deck of cards in terms of what they were dealt that they didn't even want to try. But every single person, the one common thing between everybody, they had an excuse. Whether or not that excuse was warranted or justified, that's a different conversation. Case in point, everybody had an excuse. Some people might think that excuse is better than that, but everybody had an excuse at the end of the day. And I remember very specifically for me when everything changed is when I decided, okay, I'm gonna go from six figures to try and make seven figures. And part of that, of course, I was still, this is still in the nine to five. I, was, I thought I was gonna be able to make this in the nine to five until, I don't know if you guys know the story. I made a manager, I saw how much I was being billed out for and I'm like, there's no way I'm doing this stuff. I quit and I f make my own company. When I found my own company, I realized everything is so simple, but at the same time, it is not easy. What I mean by that is when you start a business and you have a goal of a million dollars, I just have to sell to 10 people 
$100,000 projects. Simple enough. Now, as to the actual execution of it, it's not easy, or at least it's not as easy as people might think. There's a lot of moving components. But the best thing about it is it is simple, and that's what we software engineers love. It's the simplicity in things. We always try to you know, optimize everything with the big O notations. We always try to write cleaner code. In the comments, we try to simplify everything. We are used to simple, or at least we strive to have things to be as simple as possible. So when I began to understand the business world is actually simple, it's just not easy, that's when everything started to click and I realized, wait, I can do it because the only difference between myself and somebody else who did do it is, well, to figure out if it's simple or complicated because if it's complicated, we're maybe not gonna give it a try, but if I understand it's simple, I'm at least gonna give it a try. So the only thing that's preventing me from actually doing it is if I give up too early, meaning as long as I don't give up, as long as I obsess day by day over it, I will get there eventually. Now, is it gonna take me longer or shorter than some other people? Sure, people with a better starting hand will take shorter than me. People with a worse starting hand will take longer than me. End of the day, I'm not gonna compare that. I'm only gonna compare myself to myself, meaning myself to the future self of me. And that's when I realized I can just do things. The only thing that's holding you guys back from sort of like, why not you, right? Why shouldn't you be the business owner that's making that much money, that's traveling the world or whatever? Whatever it is that you think you can't achieve. Whatever that you think is a limiting belief. Ask yourself this question. If you genuinely, and I mean genuinely, obsess over that specific thing every single day and you go after it, do you believe that you can at least get somewhat of a result in whatever it is that you seek? Doesn't matter if you're starting a business, doesn't matter if some of you wanna land a quant job. Do you think if you gave it your all as a human being, your entire energy and being to it, do you think you'll be able to accomplish it or not? If you say no, now that we have a different problem. That is not limiting belief, that is already um, not understanding reality. By that I mean everything is possible. So what I would recommend you in that case is to go back and take a look at some of the conquerors, study the conquerors, Alexander the Great and these individuals, especially Alexander the Great because he is probably the epitome of limiting beliefs. Uh, there's a famous sort of thing that is tracked, I don't know if it's a direct quotation or not, but it's something along the lines of Alexander took a look at the stars in the sky and wept that there are so many worlds out there and I have yet to conquer one. So that type of like a delusional thinking. Obviously it stemmed from his mother telling him that he's the son of Zeus and he's of divine lineage and all these things. But case in point, there are people who have continuously done the impossible. There are people who have continuously throughout time done things that no other individual ever thought possible. Best example of this, take a look at the three minute mile. Everybody thought scientifically there were science papers that came out that said the human body is incapable of running a three minute mile. It biologically does not make sense. They call it biophysics or whatever it was called. And then somebody broke the three minute mile and literally a few days afterwards, people repeatedly started breaking the three minute mile because they saw that it is possible. So for you to understand that, you just have to see that it's possible. So go out there, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else, find the individual that did exactly what you're trying to do and understand that, oh wait, it is a possibility. And even if what you are trying to set out to do, nobody has done before, quote unquote, right now it's impossible, take a look at other feats of human accomplishment and try to compare it. Be it, you know, the moon landing, be it Alexander the Great conquering half the known world in his 20s, be it Napoleon, be it whoever the case. Identify a person and try to compare it. Is it easier or harder? For me, the thinking that I used to have is, okay, I wanna be able to retire my parents, I wanna be able to be financially independent, I wanna make this much money, I wanna have this impact on the world is what I'm thinking more delusional or less delusional than Alexander the Great thinking he can conquer the world and him conquering half the known world at the time. Obviously, it's way less delusional, right? Like if you put me in issues back then, I would probably be like, yeah, this guy's crazy. He's never gonna get that done. But in fact, he was able to get that done. So ask yourself the same exact question. Is what you're thinking of truly that delusional or truly that out of scope that previous examples of human achievements dwarf it in comparison? My guess is for pretty much 99.99999% of you watching this, unless you are literally actually delusional, you don't have to worry about it. Whatever you're thinking of, it is most definitely possible, rooted in reality, and you can achieve it. It all comes down to you. So if the question now is, yes, if I dedicate my all to that specific thing, I can do it, 
then the question becomes, why aren't you doing it? Are you afraid of the sacrifice? Are you afraid of what it might ask of you? Because many people, many people have this belief, have this notion that I have to sacrifice my late teens, my early 20s, my 30s, my 40s, whatever the case, so that I can live my 50s or 60s and have a good life like that. That is also completely factually incorrect. The point of sacrifice when it comes to greatness is choosing one thing over the other. But you have to understand, for example, I sacrificed a lot of partying, quote unquote, when I was working on a company. But to me, it really wasn't a sacrifice because guess what? I didn't particularly enjoy partying. So somebody else might take a look at me and be like, wow, you missed out on partying because for him, partying is important. But in reality, I couldn't give two less of a shit about partying. So is it really a sacrifice? I would much rather prefer to work and make money as opposed to go party. And if I did go party, I would now party way better than anybody else because I have more money to spend and I can bring all the loved ones with me to wherever it is that I'm going, right? So that's also another way to take a look at it. It is about sacrifice, but each individual, it's very subjective what they're sacrificing. I would argue that the sacrifice of you giving up on your dreams or you not realizing your full potential is the one and only true sacrifice that you're making when you lead a life of conformity, when you lead a life of inadequacy, okay? Once again, I don't want you guys taking this the wrong way of you have to go out and start a business and you have to push yourself. No. For some people, they don't want to do that. Some people simply want to live their life however they want to live it. I'm not here to tell you how you should live your life. What I'm here to tell you is as follows. If for once the thought has come across your mind and you've said, I can't do this or I can't do that or I can't achieve this, it's not for me, but you genuinely do want to be there, then my question to you is why not you?